Uh, I'm Patricia Zinsmeister Parker. I am a Northeast Ohio painter, printmaker, um, and I'm delighted to be participating in the Sonata Number no. Five with a lot of other very talented artists. Well, I would say right off the bat that um, I'm not sure that I can make art without music. Uh, and I say that because I've never tried. But if someone told me that I couldn't have music while I'm painting, I'm, I'm just not sure I could, I could function. So when, uh, this, um, when the plan for this uh, project was presented to me by Chris, I thought, this is, this is good. This is a good mix of how genres cross over, and uh, I, in particular, need music to function. I think that I saw the composition as a whole with parts kind of buried within uh, the various parts of the composition. And uh, so what I found that was appealing to me, it's all about energy. I, I, I got energy from listening to Ryan's piece. Um, and that energy converted into art, into manipulating paint and pencils and crayons. And without energy, you know, you can't, you can't really go very far. And I, I sensed great energy in the music, which uh, translated into the piece that I presented for the project. Well, I think what happens is the momentum builds up. Uh, I, I always play, I play around with my canvases in the beginning and just random marks with markers and uh, slapdash pieces of sometimes collage. And, um, and in a way the painting begins to um, speak to me. Uh, but it happened, now I'll turn the canvas upside down and I, I'll see a new composition. And so I, I, that's how it starts, uh, as just a playful manipulation of marks, uh, a marking process. And so my response to Sonata Number no. 5 was to uh, do a portrait, um, an enigmatic, I think, portrait. And, you know, portraits and heads of people uh, is always uh, something that People, the viewers, have a sense of a comfort level. Uh, it's recognizable, and it's something they can get a hold of. Uh, I don't know that we can call this a realistic portrait as much as an expressionistic portrait, but it has to do with, uh, definitely is connected to Ryan's music and, and the sense of what I, when I listened, the tr how I translated the music into this portrait. The colors I use spring from some place that I don't even know about. They are simply colors that I grab off my paint table. I like to mix a lot of colors. And in this case, we've got a lot of mixing actually in the values in the face. I think the face is evocative in that it may be male or female. And I have no idea whether which it is. And I like that. I like, I like the ambivalence of that. Let, let the viewer interpret uh, what this portrait represents. And let the viewer think about the musical connections uh, and how the two genres uh, have so many crossover connections. When you're in your studio and you're alone and you're listening to music, it's a pass to go many places. You might be going, you might be thinking about that hike that you took in the morning uh, with the beautiful lake and the uh, ducks on the lake. Or it could, it could go back into time, <clears throat> into a memory space capsule. 
where you have uh, something triggering an experience. Um, I think I think that the narrative can be so many things. I don't think it's one thing. I don't think it's in a line. I think it's circuitous and it covers uh, it covers history and contemporary life for me. 20 years ago I did a series of self-portraits. I did 20 of them and when I finished the 20th and I tried to do the 21st I couldn't do it. It was finished and uh, I'm getting close to that fi finalization of this group of portraits um, but I've had a great time doing them. They're all very different. Many of them uh, have psychological overtones. Um, they're, they are expressionistic. And um, in the case of that earlier set of self-portraits, they ended up all looking like family members and they didn't look like me at all. Um, but of course, I think you look at yourself in the mirror every day and when you do portraits, you're always going to have some of that vestiges of looking at yourself feeding into the portrait you're working on. And I, you know, there may be something of me in this particular portrait as I think there's a piece of me in, in every portrait that I do. And in this case, which is typical of what I do, this painting went the other direction. And you can see this leftover passage is from the original painting. This was actually the bottom of a body, and there was another head here, which this was something from, you know, I, I can't always identify what was in the original painting. But what happened then when I turned it over and began developing my big head, I left a lot of that stuff there because I like it, because you don't know what it is. You're not sure. Does it belong? I like, I like that. I like that it doesn't belong. And yet, compositionally, it's integrated. I, have, I mean, I always make sure things are integrated. Just musically, that's part of making a composition. Things must have, must be integrated and contribute to the, the entire composition. So I left that go. It ended up, this looks like a piece of her head. So that worked out rather nicely. And um, you can see here, this part of the um, blouse that she has on goes up where it shouldn't be. And there again, I like that. Um, and you can see a little bit of the early magic marker line here with the red. <clears throat> this painting came pretty pretty quickly. Uh, it wasn't overpainted like sometimes I overpaint things. And uh, I think it's fresh because, I, because it's not overworked. And I think that to me is the salient component of a, of a good solid painting, that it looks fresh. It looks like you did it yesterday. And this little red, this little red arc, the leftover from the first painting, I think is you know, I think it's important you, you, because the color, coloristically it's important and it kind of adds to the composition. I think she's enigmatic, you know, like the Mona Lisa. You're wondering, is she, what is she thinking and is she reflecting Ryan's music?